Welcome to Decoding Financial Markets, brought to you by the CTKS Method. In this video, we're going to look into NVIDIA. Could it rug pull the market? Could that flow through into the crypto market to create massive buying opportunities across the board? We'll look at NVIDIA, Avalanche and Bitcoin and also do the institutional cheat sheet to give you a huge edge across all financial markets. For Forex, yields, stocks, commodities and crypto. Here you'll learn about markets at the institutional level. Let's run the numbers. When we look across the main markets, we can see the S&P 500 futures have been coming down. The Dow futures have been coming down, but starting to retrace. The Russell 2000 futures are quite weak, as are the Nasdaq futures. But we've seen a bit of a retracement. Now, is this translating into the market? When we look at the ASX 200, we can see that the negative price momentum inside the major markets has translated through to the ASX 200. We would anticipate this kind of behavior. One thing that's really interesting, even though the DXY is coming down, we're not getting a commensurate push up in Bitcoin. This is quite unusual and I'll go through the reasons why in the cheat sheet. We can see currently the Aussie dollar is just retracing. Typically, when we see behavior like this, we expect the DXY to do the exact opposite. Let's look into the cheat sheet and we're all about timing. And this was correct at eight o'clock on the 21st of Feb. A huge amount of effort goes into these videos. If you're enjoying it, please subscribe and smash that like button. Looking into the fear and greed index across the stock market, we saw a decrease in greed. This is a good thing because when the markets are at extreme greed, we expect a pullback. The crypto market has remained the same over the past 24 hours. Something that's actually really good to see. The probability of a rate ease has increased from 8.5% to 9%. This has placed negative price momentum into the DXY as well as the US dollar currency pairs such as dollar yen. This is also driving home the Euro dollar and the Aussie dollar strength, as well as the Great British Pound strength. One thing to note, yields are on an absolute rampage. When we look at the US 2 year and the US 10, they're really going for it. But of course, the backing off of the DXY signifies that the yields may in fact come down, and that's placing some positive price momentum on both gold and silver. The potential is that China is emerging from its recession and that's translated into good price momentum on copper. We can also see that US oil has backed off its structural resistance levels. Even though all this good news was on the radar, unfortunately the VIX decided to spike. This is largely due to a, a myopic focus on Nvidia's earnings. Nvidia came down as did Microsoft as well as Apple and Tesla. It's not surprising then that the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq also came down. It is possible through structural analysis to understand that the Nasdaq has a negative fresh air gap and that means the Nasdaq could drop sharply. When these things happen, they create enormous buying opportunities. Turning to the crypto market, we can see that Total has really been going for it and Bitcoin has just been consolidating. Bitcoin has not been dragged down so far with the main markets. Ethereum is an absolute standout performer. However, when we look at the other cryptos, we can see Litecoin has been coming down, Bitcoin Cash has been coming down, AVAX has also been coming down. Doge and ADA have also been retracing. XRP has also been retracing. Solana too has come under negative price momentum. And why is this? It's largely because we had an enormous spike up, nearly $285 million worth of total liquidations. With the vast majority being long liquidations, you can see the, just the jump from yesterday to today. And that's resulted in a lot of people being caught on the wrong side of the trade and getting liquidated. The institutions hunt leverage traders, so just be aware of this. If you're liking the content so far, please smash that like button. 
Looking at the main markets, in terms of sector performance, we saw that all sectors were down just a little over half a percent. The only positive sector was consumer staples. Information technology got hit the worst, down 1.27%. A big congratulations to Levlo Max. Thank you for your comment, my friend. When we look at how people feel about the stock market in the coming six months, we can see they're becoming a little bit more bearish. But in terms of comparing that to the historical averages, we're still domestic inside the main markets. We're going to look shortly at Nvidia. Nvidia's earnings have not come out yet, but we can already see that Nvidia people are getting a little bit concerned. And you can see AMD also sold off. Tesla didn't do too well either. It's little wonder that Forbes is saying Nvidia earnings are expected to deliver extreme market volatility. From the Wall Street Journal just today, Nvidia drags down stock market ahead of its earnings report and we can see the Dow, the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq coming down. Nvidia's earnings are very important. This is the entire stock market looking at the Nvidia earnings tomorrow after the close. But how have earnings season or the companies that have reported, how have they been going? 79% of the S&P 500 have reported so far. 80% have beaten by a median of 7%. The 20% that missed has missed by a medium of negative 5%. What will Nvidia do? Many people are just looking at Nvidia. Of course, there are more companies reporting than this. Looking at previous earnings calls for Nvidia, we can see Nvidia has a very solid track history of beating EPS projections. Nvidia's earnings are top and front and center because it's really an AI play. Much of the upward momentum inside the main markets has been due to AI. If Nvidia fails to deliver, it's going to send a very clear message into the markets. And we can see the markets did retrace in the past trading session. Meeting expectations for Nvidia could be difficult because look at the year on year percentage gains that Nvidia has been performing at. It's quite a high level to maintain and to beat. It is possible for Nvidia to beat earnings because it's been going through a retracement and a rebound. Turning to the crypto market, we can see from the past 24 hours, there's been just a slight moderate amount of upward tech in terms of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Solana, a top performer, and AVAX, a top performer, are both slightly down. When looking at Bitcoin quarterly returns as well as Ethereum's quarterly returns, we can see that Q1, and we're not finished Q1 yet, is shaping up to be rather positive. Q2 tends to be a little less positive, but still positive, and Q3 tends to go down. What we've seen so far is in Q1 2024, Bitcoin and Ethereum have both been doing rather well. It's starting to be suggested that the futures open interest when it comes to Bitcoin is at such a high elevated level. We've only seen it in the preceding two peaks. We have to be careful if Nvidia actually starts to go down and the AI hype starts to get questioned, we could see retracements in Bitcoin. But that doesn't mean you should panic. That means that you should find high value projects. What we've seen so far is so many projects have come up, they've gotten really expensive. If they start to come down and we can buy at that level, we're going to get really good value. The bull market hasn't even started inside crypto. Something to keep your eye on, Pith Network has got now real-time Bitcoin ETF data. Let's have a look at AVAX. Where is AVAX? It's in the chain area. And how is AVAX going? And what should we be looking at? Something to take note of, AVAX is having a 365 million token unlock. That means the people are going to be selling. Fortunately, this sell pressure isn't really that great. It's 2.6% of circulating supply. AVAX Avalanche is a very good project. Please let me know in the comments if you like AVAX. When we look at average daily transactions, we can see in Q4 AVAX has been exploding. Total value locked inside DeFi is also doing really well. And look at this revenue, it's absolutely exploded. 
Not surprisingly, circulating market cap has been joining it. In terms of fees, when we look at Avalanche, AVAX, it's just moderately behind BNB and Aave in terms of fees. A lot of traditional finance people say that Bitcoin has no value, but when we look at Bitcoin, in terms of cumulative fees, it's done rather well. 714.3 million versus Ethereum's 1.2 billion. AVAX has a really interesting gaming ecosystem. I suggest you look at this slide. Some of these could do very well. Looking across the top gainers in the AVAX ecosystem for the last seven days, we can see that there's been some really good performance here. It's time to get into the structural levels and well done to Doomy Doomy. It's often useful to look at how retail looks through the lens of exponential or simple moving averages. We can see Nvidia's price is way above all the moving averages. This is the 200 down the bottom. The problem with a moving average, it just doesn't tell you where prices are going to hit ceilings and where the exact flaws are and also how strong they are in either direction. For example, if we just zoom in here and we know that this is the 12 period exponential moving average and we've just cut through that, but this gives us no indication of structure. Let's turn on the structural indicator and what does it tell us? It tells us a myriad of things. When Nvidia was trading down here, there was a positive fresh air gap and there was resistance at this level around that 695. It tried to come back and retest that level, but the buyers were very strong. It didn't even get down to here. That meant there was the potential to come up over this resistance, but there was another resistance level there and that's why it consolidated throughout this particular segment. Once it got over this 704 level, it proceeded up to the very strong resistance level around that 730 mark, but it couldn't maintain it. What we can see here is as price came up, it just couldn't get through. If it can't get through, what's it going to do? It's going to come back to structural support. And you can see it nearly came back to the lower one around 695. Then it tried again, couldn't get through, tried, 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 and finally broke down. Now, what does this mean for Nvidia? We're getting a retail test of that 695 level that is the potential to open up the 660 level unless we can get above if we can get above retest the 704 we're heading back to this 730 mark. SLs or Stanfield levels are fantastic indicators of where price could go. You can imagine if you were looking at Nvidia from this perspective and saying, oh, where's price gonna go? You would realistically not know because you don't have the structure inside the market. Now this is drawn up, this structure is drawn up over 9,000 days of data through level one and level two standard certification. We can see recently in AVAX's price trend, there's been some negative price momentum and that unlock is not helping things. But AVAX is also moving in accordance with Bitcoin's gravitational pull. You can see that playing out there but it's just somewhat suppressed. But when we look at the other cryptos, we can see they're all moving in terms of Bitcoin's gravitational pull. This is why you must look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin will give you the insights into the crypto market. And there's some interesting things happening with Ethereum. People are betting on a spot ETF for ETH. When we look at AVAX, we know that AVAX has been trading in excess of 1300 days. When we look at the moving averages, we're starting to see that they're starting to curl over. But this can give you some indication as to where support is, and that's typically what moving averages are used for. When I was lecturing first and second year statistics, averages suffer so many problems. They're easily distorted, which makes them non-representative. Unfortunately, inside the crypto industry, we have exponential price action. What happens when you're looking at something like AVAX, which is currently trading at 38.25? Our biggest problem with moving averages when it comes to financial markets 
they can give you an idea of where the trend and support might be. But when it comes to floors and ceilings, they're very bad at it. Turning on the service indicator will give us a much better understanding as to where structural resistance and structural support are inside the markets. AVAX came up to this 4310 level and tried to bypass it, failed. If it's failing, where's it moving back to? The lower level, just above 4050. If it can't get above it, where's it going? Back to the next SL at around that 3860 mark. This has been in a very important structural level and it's a structural level that unfortunately has been retested after a sell down. We understand that there is an unlock on AVAX, but we also understand that AVAX is not independent of Bitcoin and Bitcoin is not independent of the main market. That's why we must pay a lot of attention to what the main markets are doing. If the bears get in control, they'll seek to push AVAX down through this 3650 area. If the bulls wrestle back control of AVAX, they'll seek to push it above the 4050 area. For the service members, AVAX is an in only script that you can import into your trading view and you can use it on the free version as well. Just having a look at Bitcoin which has been trading in excess of 5200 days. When it comes to support and resistance we know there's a lot of structural support around that 50,878 level. There's structural resistance up at the 53 250 level. We've come back and retraced down to the 50,900 level and then we bounced. But we currently are caught in between two levels. We've got reasonably strong structural support underneath and relatively minor structural resistance. The bears will be seeking to break underneath this 50,750 mark just coming through here and seeking to push it down to the 49,740 and below. If the bulls get in control, it might waver around a bit, but they'll be seeking to get it above this 53,750 mark. And please let me know in the comments, where do you think Bitcoin is headed? And how do you think the interdependencies and intercorrelations between the tier one, tier two and tier three charts are going to play out on Bitcoin's price momentum? You can see, looking at the CTKS method, timing cheat sheet just gives you so much insight into where markets could be going. And if you visit ctksmethod.org, you can download your free printable template there. Just keep in mind that the high impact economic news in two days is coming out. The FOMC meeting minutes from the last meeting as well as unemployment claims and the flash manufacturing PMI and the flash services PMI as well. Have a great day or night ahead, my friends, and keep your eyes on the NVIDIA structural levels. They'll be really important. Bye for now.